I first this, heard this song, Voice of Truth, around 2003 or 2004. I was in college and could definitely relate to it. But I never really looked into it more than, hey, that's a good song with a great message. I'd heard it again in 2006, and I knew I needed to look deeper into this song. As at this point, I was youth leader here at the church, and at every meeting, we listened to and sang at least two songs. And usually, once a month, I tried to have a short devotion related to one of the songs. And I knew this is a song we should discuss. So I started looking into the meaning and the significance of the song. We would question what passages of the Bible was used to write the lyrics, possibly why the author wrote it, or how it spoke to us, and what feelings were evoked, or how it could apply to our lives. Music, especially Christian music, has always spoken to me and helped me throughout my life. Many of you can probably relate to this. Music just speaks to a different part of our soul and our brain. And music brings memories flooding back that are attached to certain songs. Now, I myself cannot play an instrument or sing that well, just as many of my pew mates in the back would tell you, that I make a joyful noise. So it was kind of shocking that music was such a big part of my youth ministry. But we had very gifted and talented youth that were talented with music and they had the abilities to read music and played in band and shared their gifts quite well. So when Eric asked me to give the message today, I was like, Lord, this is a little late notice than I like. When they have asked in the past, I've had three, four, six weeks even to prepare. Woo, I thought, all right, I can do this. But Lord, you're going to have to help me. So I looked up the lectionary and wasn't filling any of those scriptures. I prayed some more and was like, okay, hey God, it's getting close. What are we going to do? Then I remembered I'd given a talk called Arroyo at Curcio, which is now called Pilgrimage, on leaders back in 2012. And I used this song and this story about Peter and David to talk about how we can all be leaders for Christ. And as this song and this talk kept coming back to my mind, I knew that this was much more of a sermon than just a guide on how to be a leader. I decided that I could adapt it and turn it into what I think is a pretty good message for all of us to hear and ponder on. Back when I started first looking deeper into this song, I went online and found this information. This is from Mark Hall. He is the front man and principal songwriter for Casting Crowns, and he had this to say about the song he wrote. And I quote, The beginnings of this song came from the first song I ever wrote, called Fear. Growing up with dyslexia and some learning challenges, Satan used that in my life to keep me very small and very afraid to ever try anything, to ever leap out of my boat and do something that I knew I couldn't do. I'm learning that God often puts us in a position to do the unthinkable, knowing we're not able to. God's not intimidated by what intimidates me. And if I can just understand that, that all he wants me to do is obey him, and that the things that scare me don't scare him. Here is a leader of a worldwide known band that has overcome a learning disability and figured out exactly what God was calling him to do. So our youth looked at these lyrics and jumped into a deeper discussion. We talked about leaders, we talked about fear, we talked about faith and what it takes to step out of our comfort zone. And how often do we do that? Or more importantly, how often do we not do this? because we aren't letting our faith in God be as big as it should be. So today we will dive into the song, Voice of Truth. In a little bit, I will project the lyrics on the screen so we can dissect them and apply them to our lives. First, while we sang this song during the time for children and youth, you should have started making a connection from the scripture reading today 
and the song. For me, when I first read these scriptures and looked again at the lyrics, I had three words that came to mind. Leaders, faith, and fear. So my hope is that we can look and see how to apply these words from the theme of the song and from the stories in the scripture to our own lives. Let's take a look at Peter. Peter stood out as a disciple. He was a born leader. He was energetic, confident, ready for whatever may come his way, and loyal to Jesus. Except for that whole denying him three times, but we'll get to that later. Jesus saw Peter's worth and his faults and accepted him, knowing Peter's heart was good. Peter was a simple, ordinary fisherman leading an ordinary life. But something happened in his life that took it on a very different path than he had probably planned. He met Jesus, and everything changed. Does this sound familiar? Maybe you were born into a Christian family and have always known Christ. Or maybe you became a Christian later in life. I was lucky to be born into this church family and a Christian family and have always known Jesus. But that doesn't mean I didn't have to work on my faith and grow a deeper relationship with Christ. Were you just an ordinary person whose life was changed when you accepted Jesus into your life or started having a deeper relationship with him? Having a relationship with Christ changes us. It can't be denied. Let's look at the song lyrics. Follow along as I read the first part of the song about Peter walking on the water. Oh, what I would do to have the kind of faith it takes to climb out of this boat I'm in and on to the crashing waves, to step out of my comfort zone into the realm of the unknown where Jesus is and he's holding out his hand. Can you see yourself in this story? Who might you be? Are you Peter? Are you another disciple? Or maybe you can't see yourself in this story at all. If you feel you are Peter, you may have said, yes, definitely. I'm getting out of the boat and walking on water. I'm going to meet Jesus. He said, come, and here I am. If you felt you were one of the other disciples, who are not really mentioned in this story, besides that they're in the boat and they cry out in fear. But, hey, you're a disciple of Christ and you're in the boat in the first place. Maybe you're like, nope, not me. Don't see it. I didn't even get in the boat. I'm still hanging out on the shoreline trying to figure things out. And that's okay. But what might any of these scenarios say about our faith and where we are in our own faith journey? That's a tough question, isn't it? To truly look at ourselves and wonder where we are? Maybe you are wishing you had that kind of faith. The faith it takes to step out of your comfort zone and to step out of the boat. I often think about if I had been alive in Jesus' time and he came and asked me to be a fisherman of men, would I have dropped my net and walked with him? I don't know. The faith it takes to step out of your comfort zone is a lot. That's a lot of faith. Can you think of a time when you have stepped out of your comfort zone for Christ? Have you shared your faith with someone? Maybe you served on a committee here at church. Maybe you've invited someone to church. Something else? If you're like me, you have this grand plan in your head. You talk it all the way up. And then you don't quite follow through with it due to some fear or because you think it sounded much better in your head. What may be holding you back? 
I would say fear. Fear is probably what's holding us back and making us wonder if we have enough faith or if we're going to say the right thing in the right way. Peter, Peter had faith. He stepped out of the boat. But we know he let fear through doubt creep into his mind. Do you remember from our scripture reading in Matthew? It says Peter was afraid and began to sink. But he knew Jesus was the answer to his fear. Matthew 14, verses 30 through 33. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. What is the answer to our fear? Do you see it? It's right there. It's Jesus. And he is already there. He is holding out his hand. He is immediately ready to react. But most of us are listening to the next part of the song. But the waves are calling out my name. And they laugh at me, reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed. The waves they keep on telling me, time and time again, boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. Do you have any of these voices in your head? I'm sure we all do. And I know I have and do. We listen to these voices in our head. Maybe some of these voices are from our childhood. Maybe from our perceived failures and stumbling blocks as adults, as parent, as children, as siblings, or something else that we have not been able to overcome. These voices tell us we can't, we won't, we have failed before and will fail again. I and probably many of you here can think of some point in your life where you felt you could not continue on because you just wouldn't or weren't supposed to succeed. According to the statistics or the norms, I shouldn't be as successful as I am today. I was born to parents who were young and unprepared to raise a child. They both struggled with addiction, and for many years I was raised by others throughout my family, and there was a, a lot of dysfunction in my life. Luckily, I had great people and family members and people in this church who helped direct me on my path. I'm blessed with a great profession that allows me to not only prove those statistics or the norm wrong, but also helps me to do, allow others to do just that. As a teacher, I am able to push my students to not let their home life or their family situations define them. I remind them often that they are the masters of their own future and must create it and work for what they want to achieve. As recreation director at the camp I work at, I am able to ha help many overcome their fears or, their vo or those voices in their heads as they work through the challenge course in team building activities or when they accomplish what they see as an impossible feat in their mind to climb the rock wall. Here at church, I've been an elder and a leader. As a youth director years ago, decades even, I would have never thought I'd be standing here given a message. So it is not how you come into this world or how you start the race, but the path you choose and how you run the race that matters. Knowing that through Christ, you can overcome those fears and voices in your head. You may be asking, but how? How do I do that? Let's look at the but in this song. Let's read the chorus. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says, do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says, this is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me, I would choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. It's that simple. That's how we do it. We listen to the voice of truth. Yes, Jesus tells us, don't be afraid. 
You are doing this for my glory and that we need to choose to listen and believe in him and him alone. Peter may have been a barn leader, full of faith in Christ, just like many of you. But that doesn't mean that there were not obstacles and fears to overcome. Notice, Peter asked to come out of the boat. And Jesus answered simply, come. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Ask, and it will be given unto you. Walking on water, literally like Peter did, is walking by faith. Putting Christ first and seeking His will. When God entrusts you with responsibility, know for certain that He already knows you are capable enough to handle it and mature enough to handle it. Being a leader or having that kind of faith does not mean you have to be from a certain age group, gender, political group, ethnicity, denomination, socioeconomic status, or education. All that matters is that you are willing to use the gifts, passions, talents, resources, and energy that God has given you to serve. Remember, Peter was just a simple fisherman who in the end denied Jesus three times. Even after denying Christ, Jesus' trust in Peter was not destroyed. On the morning of the resurrection, Peter was the first man Jesus appeared to. So know that Jesus knows your heart and intends and your intentions and believes they are good. The second part of our song is about David. Many of us, again, probably know a lot about David and his many faults. The Manzels did a whole sermon series not long ago on David. Our second scripture reading today was one of the stories many of us learned as a child about David defeating the giant Goliath with nothing but a sling and a stone. David was not a warrior. He was a shepherd boy when he enters this story, bringing food to his brothers this song and story ultimately inspired me to read a Max Lucado book called Facing Your Giants. After studying this song and reading the book, I brought the teen edition to our youth, and we dissected it and dove into it as well. If you're interested in either of those, let me know. Let's look at the last part of the song, though. Oh, what I would do to have the kind of strength it takes to stand before a giant with just a sling and a stone, surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors shaking in their armor, wishing they had had the strength to stand. Again, can you see yourself in these verses, in this story? Wishing you'd had the strength to stand up before a giant, whatever that giant might be in your life. The book I mentioned, Facing Your Giant, forces you to take a hard look at your life and to identify the Goliaths, the giants in your life, that may be blocking your vision of God and making it hard for you to hear from God. Essentially, that is making it hard to quiet those voices that are in your head and to hear the voice of truth. David was not a perfect hero, and neither are we. Yet David drew on God's will time and time again, just as we must. In this case, David, a young shepherd boy, knows he doesn't have the brute strength to defeat the giant, so he uses his brains and smarts instead. Thousands of warriors didn't have the guts or the strength to defeat Goliath, even with all of their training. We may be like David in this story. When we reach out to others and share our faith in Christ, most of us don't have theological training to draw on, but we do have our relationship with Christ that has been built over time through prayer, study, and our overall relationship with Him. We have God's power and presence with us, just as David did. David fixed his eyes and focused on God and made the giant tumble while others focused on the giant, and they themselves stumbled. What are you focusing on in your life? The giant or God? 
Do you find this story reassuring? Why or why not? Do you believe you can slay the giants in your life? I am here to tell you that you can. God has already equipped you with the qualities and abilities to overcome your giants, your fears, and those negative voices in your head. All he is asking is for you to trust, for you to get out of your comfort zone, step out of the boat where Jesus already is, have faith in him, and join him to walk on water. Listen to the voice of truth and recognize what Jesus is calling you to do. Amen.